Hello again. We begin this session with a new topic in unit first that is Kuntak's theory of Vakrokti or Kuntak's Vakrokti Jivitam. This session is just a brief introductory session of what Vakrokti is. And in our later two sessions, we will discuss the important features of Vakrokti and how is this implied or applied in a text. Uh, Kuntak was a Sanskrit poetician and he was a literary theorist who is actually remembered for his work Vakrokti Jivitam. He had postulated the theory of Vakrokti or Vakrokti Siddhant which is uh, defined as the theory of oblique expression and he considered this as a hallmark of all creative literature. The time period when Kuntak lived was roughly between Anandvardhan in the 9th century and Abhinav Gupta in the 10th century. We have known and talked about these two theoreticians when we were discussing Sanskrit poetics and Sanskrit drama. And Kuntak is probably considered as a rough contemporary of Dhananjay and Rajashekara. Vakrokti, the term or the word, etymologically, it has two components. It is made up of two words, Vakr and Ukti. Vakr means crooked, something which is indirect or crooked. Therefore, impregnated with obliqueness of expression. According to Raghavan, it is a striking oblique expression. According to Kupaswami Shastri, Vakrokti can be understood as an obliquity of expression from the commonplace. That is, whatever we speak in daily life or whatever our common language is, if we deviate and give it, it an oblique structure or utterance, it becomes Vakrokti. The earliest use of Vakrokti, if you look back how the word came to be used, is seen or discernible in the Atharva Veda. Uh, when Subhandu uh, Vasvadatta uh, used it, Amaru Amarasuktam, he used it in Amarasuktam, and Bana used it in Kadambari. In the Atharva Veda, this word Vakrokti was used in the sense of crookedness. And the word Vedegde, that is Vidvata, has been also used in the sense of Vakrokti by Subhandu. Amaru and Bana both used Vakrokti in the sense of humor, that is remark, the former in the description of the condition of the heroine who had become angry with her husband for the first time and the latter in a bantering humorous speech made by Kandrupida about the quarrel of the parrot and the jealous manna. We will read these stories or references as a reference uh, later on in our assignment and uh, notes, suggested readings. The parrot in the story was addressing Kandripda and said that she also understood all the oblique statements and could make use of witty remarks. And this shows that uh, since we have reference to these witty remarks and obliqueness in uh, the earlier texts in Amru and Bana, this shows that Kuntak uh, was not the first one who used it. There were poets before Kuntak who were already aware of the term Vakrokti in one way or the other. Kuntak, who probably lived in the 11th century, he considered, according to Kuntak, what Vakrokti is. He considered Vakrokti as the language of literature in a very exhaustive way. He said uh, something that delineates the nature, types and significance uh, uh, he has elaborated upon the nature of Vakrokti, the types of Vakrokti and the significance of Vakrokti in his treatise called Vakrokti Jivitam. We will uh, take up this text and the summary of this text in a very comprehensive way to understand the nature, types and significance of Vakrokti. What Kuntak did was that he attempted the task of literary analysis or the critical appreciation and appraisal uh, of a text uh, like a critic from a total perspective. 
and he defined vakrokti as an utterance which is characterized by wit or ingenuity now this is important to understand that according to kuntak vakrokti was simply an utterance but was characterized by wit or ingenuity and he said further said that the language of literature which is born out of a writer's compositional skills and which is further adorned by word and meaning uh, gives rise to or gives place to vakrokti and according to him vakrokti is a striking mode of speech something which strikes the moment we read a text or a sentence and differing from and transcending some established or current mode of speech that is something which is an established form of speech if we deviate from that or we make it or the writer makes it striking that becomes vakrokti because ordinary language it gratifies a rational or a practical impulse and it doesn't uh, exhibit any kind of perceptions but the language of literature has to be different from the ordinary language of speech and therefore the language of literature since it gratifies a perceptual impulse and it doesn't exhibit reason because sometimes we say that language of literature is beyond reason so if it is beyond reason minimum of reason is applied we can have the liberty or the freedom to choose language to give it an extra edge or sharpness by providing it certain elements of wit humor irony ingenuity etc and all these things combined together gives uh, the text a structure which can be termed as called as vakrokti now kuntak's vakrokti it is considered to be as an inevitable and deliberate departure from the empirical linguistic modes uh, because to achieve certain aesthetic effects the writer uses certain modes certain languages and therefore it is a deviation from the common parlance which means in in uh, very general terms that diction or language of literature is different so we say that striking combination sometimes and uh, relations to things or objects or imagination which are beyond the reach of common man or beyond the reach of reach of common reader and as a matter of fact when it goes beyond the ordinary it becomes vakrokti and obviously then it is dictated by certain uh, necessities of certain poetical facts and therefore it is not an intellectual but it certainly takes us to a transcendental level of uh, understanding which is purely an imaginative activity one more project krishnamurti he has also written and defined vakrokti is as uh, an out of way expression he says it is certainly an out of way expression uh, and uh, uh, the phrase that he used is a beautiful one when he says it's a poetic turn it is the masterly art which underlies every single element of poetry and therefore it involves effortlessness and spontaneous transformations of the common and the prosaic raw materials which are available to the writer and which takes us uh, or rather takes us on to a journey of consummate beauty this is how krishnamurti has defined vakrokti uh, now in kuntak's view uh, there is also no line of demarcation between vakrokti and the language of literature because he has assertively said that vakrokti is the language of literature so whenever a writer is producing a work of art he has to be oblique ingenuous in his expression and therefore the same character if it assimilates uh, that is the language of literature if it assimilates vakrokti it becomes a work of art and one more critic patak he has uh, summarizes the salient features of kuntak's theory of vakrokti and in today's session we are simply taking up these features as a very at a very quick glance because later on in our next forthcoming sessions we will be discussing uh, the these features in the context of individual texts 
So let's have a very quick look at the salient features of Kuntak's theory of Vakrokti as defined and explained by Patak. Number one, obliquity or oblique expression is an essential factor of literature of any literary composition. Obliquity or Vakrokti is a striking mode of speech and it depends on the individual power of the poet. The individual creative power of the poet, it lends it a special quality. Vakrokti helps the literature or the work of literature to impart an unspeakable delight to the kazinir. Vakrokti distinguishes any literary composition from the ordinary matter of fact speech. A literary composition becomes lively in association with Vakrokti. Vakrokti is called obligatory because it arises out of literary function that is uh, it is also recognized as an alamkriti or an embellishment of the word and the meaning. So the, it is like the physical constituents of a literary composition. So the embellishments that a writer uses becomes Vakrokti naturally. Vakrokti and any literary composition or work of art are invariably associated with each other. And so any unembellished composition cannot be conceived by the writer if he is using these elements in his writing. Uh, literary delectableness, it also causes consummation, that is elevation. And whatever is rendered by any literary composition becomes charming and should be recognized as Vakrokti or as a theory of uh, or the Siddhant of Vakrokti, which uh, takes us to uh, the theory of oblique expression. We are summing up this session because we'll be taking up individual salient features of Vakrokti in our later ones. Uh, whatever we read and discussed today, uh, we are summing up that every charming feature of literature according to Kuntak must be recognized as Vakrokti. So, for example, if we are reading a piece of art or a work of literature and it appeals us, it gives us pleasure and it has a certain charming feature or element. So, any such charming extraordinary feature of embellishment or beauty provided conceived by the writer or the poet in a text should be recognized as Vakrokti. Not always the wit and the humor or the irony. Anything that has been added or provided as an adornation or embellishment by the writer is considered and recognized as Vakrokti according to Kuntak. This is all for today. We will take up individual features of Vakrokti in our coming sessions.